in three, in two, in one. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. It's good to be with you. It's good to be with you on this YouTube channel today because we are going to talk with one of the movers and shakers of the real estate appraisal business, Mr. John Brennan. Now, John has been everywhere. He's done everything. Everybody knows who John is. And John, you just recently opened your own consulting firm. Is that not correct? Yeah, correct, Tim. Thank you. And, and thanks for the opportunity to be here today. Um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, after uh, just 40 years in the business, um, I've decided to, uh, uh, to open my consulting business because I, I think that, you know, there are a lot of us around that have been in this business for, for a minute or two, and, and you're, you're, you're no exception to that. Um, I think that one of the things that uh, I consider as, as a strength for me and what I can bring to the table is that I have really had the benefit of some very varied experience in our field. I, I started as a residential appraiser. I, then I went to commercial appraising. Then I, I managed an appraisal district uh, for a large financial institution. I spent eight and a half years as the chief of licensing enforcement at the California, what is now Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers. And I spent 16 and a half years at the Appraisal Foundation, uh, followed by the last three years uh, at an appraisal management company. So that doesn't make me uh, anything special other than um, I, when we see issues that confront the appraisal industry, uh, I have the appreciation of a lot of differing perspectives that I've been exposed to over the years. So, you know, we talk about issue X, Y, Z, and I can anticipate and understand where a certain party or parties are coming from uh, just because I have been exposed to that over my career. So what I'm really hoping to do is be able to use that experience with those varying perspectives to help appraisers, to help uh, regulators to help um, uh, companies and organizations and firms to navigate some of these issues and to gain a better understanding of what some of the uh, obstacles and opportunities might be for them. Uh, also to help open their eyes to some things that they may not have had, you know, a, a, a complete immersion in, in terms of understanding where they came from, how they came about and what they really mean. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that I'll be uh, be able to be an asset to to people and companies that that can use uh, my services and my perspectives. I, I like your mention of obstacles and opportunity. So hold that thought because we're going to get back to it. Now, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that? So I do have a website. It's JSB for John Scott Brennan, JSB Consulting dot net and you the, if you go to the website you can also see my email there which is john j-o-h-n at jsb consulting dot net um, i promise to respond to any and all uh contacts uh even if it's an answer that i may not like giving or a question that i may not like seeing i am happy to do that because uh again i want to be a service okay john thank you okay john at jsb consulting.net. Okay, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that one more time toward the end, but uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. Now, uh, John, we have spoken, uh, obviously, previously, and we got together at uh, the X, uh, recent X conference in uh, Sacramento, and we, we talked about this. Uh, so uh, this is spontaneous in the fact that it's not scripted, but we have spoken to each other about this. So uh, it, it's not like we're winging this. Uh, it's not like we just call each other up and say, hey, let's do a podcast. So uh, one of the things that I had spoken to you about was, okay, three things. Number one, what pleases you about real estate appraisal. Number two, what bothers you about real estate appraisal. And number three, what flummoxes you about real estate appraisal. And of course, we're talking not only about, okay, how, you know, how do I just for a swimming pool, but okay, why, why does it look like Fannie Mae is trying to get rid of appraisers? So uh, if you would bring us up to speed on your take uh, on those topics, John, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Sure, Tim. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I think what pleases me, you know, to the uh, for the first question is that you know real estate appraisal, despite um, what many of my uh, counterparts and colleagues have have expressed recently with some of the changes that you just alluded to, and we'll talk more about those. I, I believe it's a great career. I believe it's a great profession um, for the for the reasons that that still exist today. Um, it's what attracted me to the profession, you know, being able to be out and about, being able to see homes or commercial properties or whatever your particular preference is in terms of being an appraiser, being able to understand the real estate market, being able to have insights, um, really being a player. And I think that that, 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 is, that is something that um, becomes ingrained in, in us as appraisers. Which is which is which kind of leads to the part that may not be great and may flummox me, and that is that you know sometimes we lose sight of our role. Um, I think that you know with with some of the things, for example, when you look at the real estate industry and the lending industry, and of course you know I'm, I'm generalizing now because there are a lot of appraisers that don't do lending work at all or GSE work or anything like that, but. When you look at that, you have to understand this is a very robust and significant uh, financial industry that as appraisers, I would never, ever, ever suggest for one moment that we're not important, but we do have a role. And, and when we say, uh, for example, that we, that, you know, well, there are certain things happening in the industry and we need to put a stop to it. We need to understand what our strengths are and what our weaknesses are. I think that it is, it is, it's a dual-edged sword of who we are. You know, we're required um, by USPAP as well as our basic professional ethics to be independent, impartial, and objective, and to perform assignments without bias. There's the B word. Um, and I think that that we sometimes that that plays to our favor and sometimes that plays against us and what i the, to try to illustrate where i think that that plays against us is we tend to be very siloed when you look at at our profession and this industry and you look at how many of us are truly um joined are truly uh, uh you know part of something bigger uh, in terms of just our daily practice, the numbers are really abysmally low. You know, we, we have a number of professional appraiser associations in this country, uh, the Appraisal Institute being the largest one. But even with all of those professional uh, trade associations, the, it still represents just a fraction of the number of appraisers in this country. And so the reasons that that, that goes against us is because we don't have that voice. We don't have that singular approach. And don't get me wrong, um, these organizations, uh, National, National Association of Appraisers, AI, Farm Managers, Appraise, uh, American Society of Appraisers, on and on, they do a great job um, for their membership. But again, it's very splintered. And I think that in, in many cases, where there are changes either being proposed or actually occurring in the industry, we don't have that singular voice. And in many cases, I've said this before, it's, it's akin to being that wounded impala on the Serengeti that the lion goes after because we're an easy target. And it, it doesn't mean that we, we can't speak up and that we can't be organized. It means that we have to have a common understanding of who we are, what we can do, and what we can't. Now, we talked briefly, uh, mentioned the term obstacles. And I think that as appraisers, we certainly can and should raise obstacles to things that we think are going to be problematic for us. But we also have to keep in mind, you know, a, a perfect example of an obstacle is a closed road a blocked off road. When you come to, uh, when you come to a crossing where that has, that says dead end, closed road, do not pass. 
what do you do? You do what everybody else does and you figure out a way to go around that. And so while we should, and, and I can't say this strongly enough, while we should stick up for what we believe is right and what is necessary for our, our own industry, we also need to realize if we want to put up massive objections to every potential change and not be part of the conversation and not try to find a solution, be a cooperative partner, those with the power, and that's the, the multi, multi-million dollar business that we're in, will find a way to go around us. We've seen a little bit of that. Um, you, you mentioned the GSEs. I don't personally believe, despite what you read on the blogs and in the, and in the uh, discussion posts, that the GSEs are truly trying to eliminate appraisers. I think it's different. And, you know, I, I think that we are looking at a different way that technology policy is impacting our profession. And guess what, guys? It's not just us. Try to think about uh, any single profession that has not been impacted by technology and changes. You know, there's, a, there's, there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly. But we have to realize change is going to happen no matter what. And as I've said many times, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance a lot less. So my whole goal in working as part of this industry and part of this profession is to keep us relevant, to, keep, to make sure that we still have a voice, that we are part of this. And so I, I totally support appraisers from that regard. I don't think that it's benefiting us or our profession by looking at issues and looking at and just putting a hand up and saying, no, we're, you know, we're not going to go there. And in many cases, not making an informed decision about that. Um, I'll throw out one example. You referenced the recent ACTS conference that we attended in Sacramento. During that conference, um, I think there were just short of 200 people in the, in the room, if I'm not mistaken. About, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, so one of the questions that was asked, um, and I may have been the one that asked it, is how many people have read the PAVE report? Now, right away, I'm sure some listeners will say, oh, that PAVE report, you know, we, we know what that's all about. And, and, and I'm not in any way, shape or form going to get political here. What I'm saying is, how many times, I've been doing this for 40 years, how many times has the president of the United States talked about real estate appraisals and talked about appraisers? Now, again, I'm not saying that, you know, he's good, bad, or sideways. What I'm saying is it is a prominent issue at the highest level in our country. And when I asked the question about how many people have read that report, it was about 25% in the room. And my point here is whether you, whether you love what the payoff report is, is, is about or whether you detest it, it's irrelevant. You need to understand it. You need to understand what's going on in our profession, what's being talked about so that you can make an informed decision and have an informed opinion about it. Otherwise, you're shortchanging yourself and you're shortchanging our industry. And I will say the same thing since we talked about the GSEs. Um, I will say the same thing about some of these um, new products, you know, whether it be you know, the value acceptance plus property data collection, whether it be you know, the hybrids, the desktops, all of that. If you don't want to do them, don't. If you don't like them and you're opposed to them, that's fine, but have a basis. I have talked to so many appraisers that have said, oh, you know, I'm not going to do that because of X, Y, Z. And, and I said, have you looked at it? Have you ever tried it? You know, I'm not saying you have to be in favor of it. Just the opposite. You, you have every right to oppose it, but be informed about why you're opposing it or supporting it. It's a matter of, of being professional. And that's something that, that I can't underscore enough. Uh, John, uh, speaking of uh, being professional, you mentioned sp uh, splintering. 
And uh, people have referred to the real estate appraisal industry as both fractured and fractious. And you have spoke, you spoke about the AI, the biggest group. You spoke about the NAA, one that's near and dear to our hearts, the farm managers and rural appraisers, the ASA, the IAAO, uh, even to some extent, the, uh, 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 the Institute of, of, of Chartered Surveyors, although that's primarily European. Um, Okay, there are a whole lot of organizations out there that uh, I don't want to say represent. Oh, and realtors, I forgot the realtors. There are a whole lot of, of organizations out there that represent, or excuse me, of, that realtors can associate with, not necessarily, uh, they don't re necessarily represent real uh, appraisers, but appraisers can join for both professional and fraternal reasons. Now, you and I both agree that these organizations offer opportunities that the appraiser who sits around in the basement, uh, you use the word siloed, uh, sits around in the basement and doesn't get involved, can't take advantage of. But yet in the same vein, uh, there are so many that it is not our desire to be part of an organization stifled by the fact that there are so many organizations out there and therefore there is a siloing there is a fractioning uh, there is a uh, 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 we, we are a fractious group or is it just that we've all been making too much money to worry about it in the past few years well that that's a great question tim and i mean to me it, it um it's it's kind of akin to you know when you're when you're working in in uh, on the computer or on a, a word document or something and you're looking for a color of the font and you have an infinite choice of colors it's like i just want blue no well you've got about 45 different shades of blue you can choose from um so i think there's some legitimacy to that uh but i will also say that that so so each organization has its own particular strengths and some have weaknesses in terms of the areas that they really focus on. I think what appraisers would be wise to do is to investigate those, investigate what these groups, you know, are what they're about, who the leadership is, um, how they operate. Um, because again, it, yes, it, the easy answer is to say, no, I'm going to put my head down and just do my thing. And, and, and I'm not going to be part of something bigger in terms of, of a professional trade association. But I think that the, the, the truth is that it's not because we've just been too busy the last few years with the crazy volume and stuff. This has been the case for the 40 years that I've been in the business and from what I know well before that. Um, so I think that I think that it's a matter of saying, you know, it really comes down to and I've heard this debated for so long. Are we a profession or are we an industry? And, and I think that being a profession, while you may not, while you may have many options on what type of group to affiliate with, the important thing is you're affiliating with at least one, if not more. Um, you know, you mentioned NAR. You know, I, I am I am a member at NAR. I am also on the Real Property Valuation Committee at NAR. And why is that? Because I want to try to make sure that the valuation side of our business is being represented there. And we've got some great folks, people that, people that you know, this year the chair is Peter Gallo, last year it was Frank Gregoire. We've got real, you know, there's people that most people know the names and they do a great job representing us on this committee. But being part of it, you can actually see and hear the concerns and the issues that come about. I will say that, that, that some of the stuff that we have done out of that committee, I've been very, very proud of. Um, it's, it's a matter of being involved. And I know it's the, it's the age old quandary um, of being an appraiser. When business is booming, you're making so much money and you're doing so many appraisals that you don't have time to enjoy that and spend that money and, and take a leisure because you know that you know that this is a cyclical business. You know that when you're at the top, it's just crazy and you need to take advantage of it. And then when it gets to the bottom, 
you realize, wow, I kind of have to live off of what I've made here. I can't really enjoy this, you know, at any particular point in time, unless you make it a, a specific goal of yours to do that. But I do think that, that one of the things that, that ties into this, and, and particularly to what I just mentioned, is many, many, many industries, um, of course, are very cyclical in nature. You know, whether it be the stock market, whether it be um, home improvement, whether it be, you know, uh, car, uh, antique car collection, there are highs and there are lows and it swings. I will say this. I believe that our profession, uh, and it's tied to the lending and real estate markets inextricably, um, the highs are very, very high and the lows are very, very low. So the swings for us are more dramatic than they are in a lot of industries. And so that's part of the reason that we talk about being part of something bigger, because again, can you do things? Can you be part of something to help um, maybe avoid the depth of those lows and maybe mitigate those highs? It doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not saying we want to do less work than when it's busy, but, you know, trying to do something to, to, to account for those huge swings. So I'll give you a, another example. Um, when, I, when I was the chief of licensing and enforcement at the state of California, um, we had a new director come in and he had actually come from the uh, Department of the Alcoholic Beverage Control. And people say, what's the connection there? And I said, well, I'm gonna leave that one alone. But the, the, when he came in, he looked at our statute. We had a printed copy of our statute. And, it was, you know, maybe just 25, 30 pages long. And he said, well, where's the rest of it? And I said, well, what do you mean? That's it. And he says, well, this is all about how our agency does things. And, you know, it includes some certain provisions. But he said, where I come from, the statute for uh, regulating alcoholic beverage control is huge. It's thousands of pages. And I said, well, what are you talking about being more regulated? We don't want that. And he said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Those, the statute in that agency included provisions that the people, the licensees that were selling alcohol uh, under the state have put in to protect their business, to benefit their business. There are things that they've gone to lobbyists and say, we need to get this put in here so that it doesn't restrict or hamper our business. One of the reasons that the appraiser, the appraiser statute did not include that was because of this fractured nature, because that, that there is not that singular voice stepping up and saying, we need laws that will uh, impact how we do our business in a positive way and protect us from X, Y, Z. Now, it may not be, you know, maybe apples and oranges between those two, but, but I'll never forget that. that. That resonated with me because the, my immediate reaction was, you know, you're talking about over-regulation. And in fact, it was more about protected regulation. And so I think that goes back to what we are talking about here in that you know, if you're the lone wolf, if you're the appraiser in the basement with a bare light bulb over your head, you're, you, you may be working for yourself, but you're not working for something greater being the real estate appraiser profession. Okay, so you're, you're working for yourself, but you have no vision of the greater good is what you're saying. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't know if I'd go that far that there's no vision, but I, I, I mean, is certainly in some cases that may be true, but I think there are a lot of appraisers out there that, that are aware of what some of these external uh, influences and issues are, but they really don't have a voice. They don't, they're not part of something, so they don't have an organized uh, voice and instead are much relegated to the blogs and the discussion groups and such. And while that may feel good to vent and, you know, and talk about that darn AMC that, you know, is, is paying low fees and things like that. And I'm not saying there's no, they shouldn't be doing that. What are we actually doing to solve it? What, why aren't we part of the conversation with those entities 
uh, and that goes as far as the GSEs, that goes as far as FHA, that goes as far as VA, that goes as far as all of the various entities that impact our profession, having a voice and being able to be part of the discussion. Now, I'm going to jump into real quickly, maybe not, but I'm going to try real quickly, the, um, the bias topic, because to me, this is the same exact thing that, you know, it, it, you remember the movie, um, The Naked Gun, um, <laughs> and Leslie Nielsen, one of my favorites, right? So one scene in that movie, um, there is, there is a, a car that goes into a fireworks factory and it sets off the biggest explosion of fireworks and, 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 and fireballs and booms and everything else. It's catastrophic, right? And you have Leslie Nielsen saying, Move along, folks. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Well, how many people think that, that he had credibility with the folks there? Now, where am I getting at? As appraisers, when we're when this topic of bias and this and 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 any related issue, but let's talk about bias for a minute. When the appraiser's answer is nope, nothing to see here, move along that doesn't register as credible with those from the outside looking into our industry. Our industry and fundamentally at 16 and a half years at the Appraisal Foundation is public trust. And if the public, if we don't have public trust, then we're not gonna get anywhere in advance as a profession. There are those who, who will criticize and those will say, you know, this is an old boys network and you've seen the statistics about the lack of diversity and all that. If we're not part of that conversation and saying, okay, we hear you, we hear that you have concerns, let's talk about that and let's try to educate you where we're coming from. Let's try for us to better understand what you're seeing and what you're hearing. If that doesn't happen, we are going to be Put, pushed aside, and there will be ways that, that things progress without us. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we're really seeing today, and we're going to see with whatever recommendations uh, continue to come forth from the PAVE task force, um, is this real focus on the consumer, on the borrower. This has already started. And I think that, you know, we really need to, as a profession, um, welcome this and, and think more about the borrower and how they see things. And a perfect example, and this is one of the big things that is, that is coming out of the PAVE report, hopefully in the next couple of months, is some sort of standardized reconsideration of value process. And when I talk about that, the first thing appraisers say is, oh, no, no, I don't want, I don't want a reconsideration. Of course we don't. You know, we're like, we're like anybody else. We complete a project and we don't ever want to see another email about it. We don't want to get a phone call about it. We don't want to deal with it. Of course. The question though is if you are a borrower and you, you know, and, and I won't even go into whether you're a person of color, but it's even more, more concerning for a person of color because they look at an industry that they see as being monochromatic and, and, and not diverse, but if you get this appraisal and you haven't dealt with the appraiser directly other than maybe let them in the house if it's a refinance or an equity, you don't understand the process. How many, how many borrowers over the years think that they're the client, that they're the appraiser's client when they are nothing more than a beneficiary? You know, they do get copies of the appraisal report because federal law requires that but that doesn't make them an intended user. And I'm not suggesting they become an intended user. Let's make that clear. But we need to have a more public facing um, you know, voice that we can explain this process to. And that if, an, if a borrower is unhappy with an appraisal, that there is a, a legitimate reconsideration of value process that not only allows the borrower or the broker to ask for reconsideration based on the things that they're legally allowed to do. But it's, it's vitally important that this doesn't impede appraiser independence. We can't have some process where somebody says, well, would you take a look at this again? And you, know, you do, no change. Well, how about again? Or how about if I provide this additional information? And, and 
appraisers become overwhelmed with these requests. There has to be a balance, but that balance has to be outwardly facing as well. Speaking of outwardly facing, let, let's um, uh, as we get close to the end, let, let's talk about that. Have appraiser? Let me let me let me rephrase the question. Let me reframe the question. Do you think appraisers have done a proper job of communicating to the public in such a manner that appraisers have earned the public's trust in what we do? how we do it and why we do it? Well, that's a great loaded question. And, and I will say that, that in some respects, the answer is yes, absolutely. And, but in, unfortunately, in many respects, the answer, my opinion, is no. Um, I will say that, that you know, a lot of appraisers um, gravitate towards our profession because they are not they do not like the networking. They do not like the business aspect of going out. How many appraisers have you talked to that you say, well, what's your business plan? And they basically say, well, I sit and wait for the emails to come in with that order I can bid on. That, that's not a business, folks. That, that's, that's the kind of thing that pushes us down the evolutionary ladder. What we need to do is we need to be able to explain and discuss coherently, professionally, what we do, how we do it. Don't be afraid to, you know, to let people see behind the curtains. You know, tell, explain to them what they're doing. That's part of the reason you've seen some of these bias concerns. There's been such mystery about how the appraisers actually do this. So I think absolutely there is a tremendous opportunity for improvement to really show the public and the world who we are, what we are, how we do things, and try to demystify our profession. John, when, back when you were with the Appraisal Foundation and the ASB put out a, uh, a proposed draft for changes, and I'm not talking about the fifth one, because uh, I'm, I'm gonna mention that, but before, when, when, you, were, when you were involved, um, what, and, and I'm going to ask this question rather facetiously, and you already know the answer, but when new changes came out, when, when, when changes were proposed in the exposure drafts, was the appraisal foundation and the ASB overwhelmed with responses? Um, overwhelmed, it would be exactly the opposite. Um, I, and this is, this was, you know, something that when I was there and continues to be today, a real effort. Um, by not only the Appraisal Standards Board, but the Appraisal Qualifications Board with the Appraisal Foundation. You know, we have best guessed, I mean, for round numbers, like 70, 75,000 licensed and certified appraisers in this country. We would typically get somewhere um, on a low of about 25 comment letters to a proposed expert, tw not 25,000, 25. 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and on an, in an, an amazing response, maybe as high as 75. Well, do the math folks. I mean, I will, I will take this a step further. Even if you just don't want to be part of an association or an organization, my gosh, you've got to have opinions on what's being proposed that changes the way you do things every day. And so to not, Again, to not read the exposure drafts and then to not offer comments on the exposure drafts. And I assure you, as I have said, I've had people tell me over and over again, well, we don't comment because the comments don't matter. They're going to do what they want to do. Let me just tell you, I can speak from absolute experience and every single comment letter is read and discussed by the boards. We sit in rooms and read them through and talk about the good points, talk about things that eh, maybe it's off target, talk about what people are saying. So if, if there's one thing that I could get across today um, to our appraiser brethren is read these proposed changes and make your comments. And, and, and trust me, they're read and it doesn't matter if you have any initials after your name, after your name, you have a whole slew of initials after your name. They don't care who's making the comments in terms of what they represent. 
They care about what's being said, and most importantly, the rationale for what's being said. And if you're not doing that, you're not taking advantage of a golden opportunity to have direct input into things that affect your day-to-day -day life. John, thank you. I appreciate it. That's, that's exactly where I was going. Thank you uh, very much. All right. Um, we're getting close uh, to the time limit. Uh, one more uh, quick question. In a uh, recent USPAP class, the issue came up, uh, who represents appraisers? And uh, as the instructor, I indicated that, that there was no formal, uh, and we mentioned this earlier, there was no formal representative body. But then isn't it also clear, John, that we've got to represent ourselves individually? And when you get the opportunity, when you go to a convention and you get the opportunity to talk to somebody who is uh, uh, well, a name like you, uh, you, you get the opportunity to talk to somebody who is an influencer, who does associate with the movers and shakers. Do, should we just know, hi, how you doing? It's a pleasure, blah, blah, blah. Or should we actually go up and say, listen, I, can, can I have five minutes? I just want to share something with you. Is, is that the attitude we should be taking? Or should we just attend the convention, enjoy the dinner and go home? Well, definitely, definitely the former, Tim. I, I, and, and I will tell you this, that um, uh, speaking for myself, as well as every one of my colleagues, uh, such as yourself and, and, and others that are leaders in our profession, there is no one that would say, I'm sorry, I, I don't have time to listen to you or, or, you know, I don't value your opinion. You know, we are in this together and it is important that we communicate with each other. I think that, you know, sometimes people get the impression that, again, much akin to the comment letters that we talked about, that their opinion doesn't matter. And, and that couldn't be further from the truth. I think that, you know, we need to show that we're professional. And I'll just say one quick thing, because I know we're running out of time. You know, uh, you and I both were at a conference last fall in Las Vegas, where I was on a panel. And there was a, a young man in the audience um, that spoke up and said, you know, I know things have slowed down. And I know there's different types of appraisal products that, you know, not everybody likes, etc. And he said, for, he said, I believe I'm fortunate to be part of this business. He says, I understand that it's not the same that it's been for a lot of people, but I still feel very fortunate and I'm happy to do these types of assignments, which I thought very courageous, very brave, great for him to say that in support of our profession. Somebody else in the audience made a very derogatory remark in response to him and you know, even, even referred to him as ponytail boy uh, because he, he had a little ponytail and said, you know, well, if he wants to do those assignments, good for him. Um, that's not something I'm going to do. Well, you know what? That's fine. You certainly have the choice to do what you want to and not what you want to, but you shouldn't be demeaning others in our profession for your personal viewpoints. Understand not everybody is equal. Not everybody wants to do the same types of things. Not everybody has the same focus. But don't demean somebody because they may be willing to do certain things that you're not as an appraiser. That's what makes a profession. And uh, perhaps the, the uh, and I remember the remark, uh, perhaps the gentleman uh, who did so uh, was demonstrating his own bias, which is something we're most assiduously trying to avoid. Uh, John, two, two more quick questions. Number one, I know you do a lot of traveling. Uh, are you going to be on the road soon doing any speaking where someone could come and uh, chat with you? Uh, well, I will be uh, in, in a week or so. I'll be going to the uh, Aero Conference in Savannah, Georgia, which is the uh, Association of Appraiser Regulatory Officials. So it's the states and such. And so uh, anybody that might be listening in, please say hi to me there. Uh, I'll be attending the uh, Appraisal Summit Conference in Las Vegas in August. And I would be more than happy to say hi to anyone and everyone there. Um, and then, of course, um, anybody can drop me a line at any time, and I would be, be more than happy to talk to them. And again, your email is? John, J-O-H-N, at jsbconsulting.net. jsbconsulting.net. John, very good. 
please let me thank you both personally and professionally. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your expertise. I appreciate the fact that every time we get to see each other, uh, it's you know open and friendly, and you are all over the place all the time. I'm I'm surprised you can remember your home address, but uh, uh, yeah, just so everybody knows, yes, John's very approachable. Just walk up and say hi, <laughs> and you'll you will enjoy the experience. So, John, again, my best, my best to you, my best to your family. I look forward to the next time we meet, and to everyone out there watching, thank you. We're glad you're here, and again. Get in touch with John if you've got any questions. Thanks so much, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye.